Are you an octopus or an elephant? Hans vlogs once or twice a week. Hello, my friends. I'm Professor Hans von Puppet. I'd like to welcome all of you new subscribers that came on in the last week. Thank you to Weezy Wader and Hank Green for tweeting and stoking the fire about my last video. And a very special thank you to all of you who forwarded my YouTube 101 video to each other, gaining me 635 new subscribers so far. Just in a week. It's incredible. Welcome to the Professor Puppet family. Let's keep this train a rolling. My next video about how much money people can make on YouTube is coming soon. But it's pretty complex with lots of graphics and math and all that, and I didn't want to let a Monday pass by for all you new people without a new video. So here goes. This is something I've been thinking about for a while. As you might imagine, I think a lot about how different people approach YouTube. There are channels who produce elaborate videos with lots of production value and teams of people, and they do some amazing stuff and it costs a lot of money. Then there are channels who just kind of talk to the camera, or record their video gameplay, let's say. Which is the right way to go? Well, that question got me thinking about the animal kingdom. Elephants. They take a year to gestate their young. They have one baby at a time. It's enormous and it takes a lot of their resources, time, and attention. They take really good care of it and raise it to a fully functioning adult elephant. Then you got the octopuses, or octopi, or octo... Where are the octopus? They have like a thousand babies at once. And once they all hatch, they all just kind of swim away. And the mother pays no attention to them at all. And most of them die or get eaten. But still, enough of them make it through to adulthood to have their own babies, so that we got plenty of octopuses. Octopi. Octo. <sighs> now on YouTube, we got people like, let's say, Barely Political, with a large staff putting together very elaborate, beautiful videos with lots of people in them, making high quality videos with the potential to appeal to a wide audience and maybe be passed around by people, go viral maybe, and become evergreen content that will go on earning them views for years to come. Then you got the daily vloggers who make a video every day just talking into their iPhones about what's in their purse. These are going to appeal to a smaller audience, of course, but they're going to put out thousands of them, just like the octopus. And they're going to find their audience by sheer numbers. Now, which is better? Well, neither is better, I think. We need the octopuses and the elephants. We want to watch the big tentpole videos, but we also like the feeling of intimacy and engagement we get from the vloggers. Here's the thing. The world is huge. There are enough people out there that no matter what you're doing on YouTube, somebody out there wants to see it. And if you can tough it out long enough, you're going to find your audience. At least I hope so. Otherwise, I'm screwed. Thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Be sure to subscribe so you see these brilliant insights right away as soon as I put them out. And if you click the like button down there, it just might show up in your Facebook feed. And then all your friends will think, oh, how clever you are. This is much more interesting than those lists of things from BuzzFeed or whatever. Coming soon, how much do YouTubers make? Oh, I'm so excited to find out.